As a mother of three, I know that being a parent can be a big job. Norma Hesterman is the mother of four, but along with her husband, she's also been the foster parent of 21 foster children. What's especially unusual in this case is the overwhelming success she's had. Almost without exception, she's remained close friends with her foster kids as adults. Many of them credit her with saving them and turning their lives around. For her day job, Norma works at Gunn High School as the volunteer coordinator, but she's also herself volunteered countless hours for the school, for her church, for the Girl Scouts, for the YMCA, as founding board member of groups such as Adolescent Counseling Service, and she's received several prestigious service awards. She's so beloved that when her position at Gunn was slated to be eliminated, the entire community, teachers, students, staff, and parents, erupted in passionate protest to oppose the move. Norma, I'm guessing it was not your uh, lifelong dream when you were a little girl to be a foster mother. How did it get started? We were living in Palo Alto and uh, had four children, and there was uh, another family with four children who lived very close. And it included a little girl who was very needy, very neglected. All of four children were that way. And I knew that I needed to do something about it. So I told the mother I would help her in any way I could if she would let me. Otherwise, I'd have to report her. She accepted my offer immediately. And um, so one of the plans was for me to take, for us to take the youngest one. So we ended up with this little girl who was in second grade, could not read, and still sucked her thumb. Wow. And she was a success story too in the end. She just she blossomed yeah. in our house. And, and all of our children loved that. So that was when I thought, oh, maybe this is my calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the, after our very first placement, we had a little boy who was very, very, had been very badly abused and was very troubled. And he did so well that um, the social worker asked if we'd be interested in being a therapeutic home. Therapeutic home. Uh, or, or just told us they'd like to make us a therapeutic home. And, and we said we would try that, yes, uh-huh. So that meant that you took the most challenging kids. We took kids that, yes, we took children that were very, that had real painful backgrounds. You know, there were lots of challenges, um, including the lying and stealing. Um, we had a couple, well, maybe, maybe three or four of those. I think it was helpful that immediately, immediately upon arrival, we indicated that we um, understood they had been through some things and, and, and invited them to, to tell us about it if they wanted to, and then to discuss things like values mm -hmm. <laughs> and reputations and, and what they might want to change, if mm -hmm. they wanted to change anything. Um, so we had marvelous conversations, and sometimes they'd give me a clue that just led me, led me to learn a lot about them. And I think they knew from the beginning that we truly wanted to help them. Well, I often asked the children if they had run away, because children, troubled children, and I think several of the children in the sh children's shelter have shared that, that they run away from home. And so I would ask them if they had run away from home. And they, they thought that was pretty funny that I would ask them that. And I said, well, you know, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to know how to do it right. And so um, we would make a list of all the things you needed if you were going to run away from home. Well, we had a lot of fun with them. We had a lot of fun with them. We teased them, too, and let them tease us back. And they know when you're enjoying their company and having fun. And, and they, they did could, chores and gardening. Oh, things. they definitely, yeah. They had to help with, with things. And so they learned about plants and they learned about gardening. They learned about what it takes. We try to teach them what it takes to have a family. What has surprised you most about this whole experience, these whole experiences? Well, um, that, that I think that 
we have so many that we're still friends with. And as, as I might have mentioned, we ran a pretty tight ship, but it was a loving ship. And I thought that the, the kids might be thinking, this is okay, but when I'm 18, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. They did not, that that isn't what came to pass at all. If you had any advice for parents in general, which I think you qualify for with 21 plus 20, 25 kids 25 to, to your, kids, on, yeah. your, uh, on your resume, what would it be? What would you really like parents to understand? Well, I would like them to maybe have a workshop in listening or something like that. I, I think that might be, I think they call it motivational interviewing now. You know, when you learn how to talk with someone and help them by, by motivating, by not being too eager to give advice, and, mm -hmm. and rather just really, really listening. Do you know someone who has overcome significant hardship and has an inspiring story to tell? Someone who has sacrificed or given over and above to the community and deserves some recognition. If so, please contact us with your nomination for next year's Local Hero Awards. To find out more about our local heroes and to watch interviews with all the winners, visit our website, midpenmedia.org. At the Midpen Community Media Center, you can make your own videos and television programs and take classes in all aspects of media production. You can also hire our professional services team. To find out more about that, go to mcproservices.com. Congratulations to all our winners, and thank you for watching.